Hey everybody, um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, Nintendo Switch games I've played recently. Um, I've been playing a lot of Switch. Um, during Black Friday I got a pretty good deal. Um, they had, GameStop had this buy to go and free going. Um, I got Monkey Ball, um, I got uh, Namco game, Namco Arcade Pack, and I got a Hat in Time. And I'm going to talk about um, some of those. <laughs> Um, not all of them. I haven't extensively played the arcade pack or had in time. Um, but I have played Super Monkey Ball and I have returned to Animal Crossing. Um, as many have probably guessed from my pictures on Twitter... I don't know why I've set up that line, because no one's really guessing. This is like a discussion to n no one, but... Um, yeah, the new Animal Crossing update is fantastic. I mean, it adds so many new features to the game that are new, like farming, that's such an odd thing to add to the game that almost seems like they would add in a sequel, not like an update. Um, all of the new, all the special animals they added back into the game with um, the camp, with the Harv's Island, actually making them into a feature, um, adding Cap'n and Brewster back to the game. It just feels complete, finally. And I honestly never thought it would. Even like I always had this idea in my head that, okay, They'll keep adding features, but it'll never feel complete. But honestly, at this point, I th I think it's I think it's a substantial great game. Okay, there's just a sound. But yeah, um, I fixed some issues with the game that I had before, like the villager dialogue. They it seems greatly expanded, and that has made me, in the short time that I've returned to the game, really fall in love with the villagers on like a level that I did the previous games. Just like having this like built up affinity from playing in the playing with the old dialogue and now having this new additions it really almost feels like I've like gone a step further in becoming friends with these animals and yeah it's felt very impactful that that feeling of playing Animal Crossing that cozy feeling it's never been better and New Horizons is just as good as New Leaf I'd say now um, I, I'd give the game like a 9 out of 10 I'd say it's pretty fantastic there's of course still problems as there always will be with on Nintendo and online and other design features that are meant to add to immersion but are pointless, like the crafting systems, flaws with not being able to craft multiple items and such. But I feel like at that point, most people have accepted those as just things that happen in Nintendo or Animal Crossing games. And I don't, I don't know, it's not really a big deal to me at this point, having gotten over that shit. The other game I played was Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. Um, I got the uh, anniversary edition, I think it's called. Um, I did not bring that with me to my college dorm because it's just a cardboard sleeve with a art booklet that just has JPEGs. But it's cute, it's cute. The inside of the box is cute also. Now, um, now Monkey Ball is a series that I have a pretty storied history with. Um, I played the first two games, um, not when they released, but um, secondhand, um, around the big like 2012, 20 to 2015 ish, somewhere, somewhere in that pocket of time. And I always loved them for the party mode. I always liked the main mode, but I was really, really bad at it. Like I think the best I got was beating the beginner mode, which is kind of not epic. Um, I had Monkey Ball too. I never played it that much. I mainly played the first one, and in that I mainly played Monkey Target, but still through some sort of hack, hack, hack jawed connection, I do, I do like Monkey Ball. Um, I, I think some of the experimental games are interesting, like Step and Roll. Um, it's not my favorite marble rolling franchise, game franchise, which is weird that there's so many, but um, Core Rimpa is definitely my favorite. But Monkey Ball is a, a second, it's definitely on the docket there. And Banana Mania is very polished. Um, it kind of has this like icky modern like not icky but like this sort of sort of I don't know how to explain it very soft modern Sega feel where it just feels overly polished less of like polish in terms of making mechanics feel good more of polish in like a toy plastic aesthetic -y. Mario 3D World style I guess but the game all the level designs are still intact and playing them is as fun as ever um, yeah, I really like Monk Banana Mania. It's, there's not a lot to say about this game. Um, I've not tried many of the party game modes, but I've heard most of them are pretty good, except for Monkey Target, which got screwed over. Um, the, but, okay, one thing I love about this version 
is the lack of the death feature because that basically changes the entire game. Like, but I remember I was so discouraged having to restart the whole long string of levels in Monkey Ball 1 and 2 after dying too many times and seeing the continue. It just took, it just broke the pace. Now Monkey Ball is almost like a 3D Super Meat Boy-esque type of game where you will die over and over again, but it's not really a big deal because death is meaningless and you could just restart in five seconds. So I think that kind of transforms the way you view the levels and it's less of an endurance and more of just a Meat Boy kind of game where it's just a puzzle, like almost like a puzzle of just figuring out how to do these crazy things. And I, a lot of the levels are bullshit. It's Monkey Ball. I mean, I'm sure if I understood the physics to a T, I'd be able to deconstruct what the levels are, but a lot of, I'm just not good enough at the game to do that, even after playing this version, which has different physics, but still the same idea with most of the level designs. Um, I'm still not good enough to be even like intermediate, but I've gotten, I've gotten, I've gotten pretty, pretty far into it. But yeah, Monkey Ball Banana Mania is good um, for $20 on Black Friday. That's a steal. Um, that's probably the best Black Friday deal I've ever gotten, because for like Sega always makes their games so cheap, like to buy. Like, when's the last time Sega's released a sixty dollar game that they actually developed? Like, like Sonic Forces was like forty or something. Like, <laughs> like that's like should be like a. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it reflects how much effort and time was put into the game. Maybe they have a different strategy. But something about Sega just feels like modern Sega just feels cheap. Like, the way they do the two packs of everything, the way a lot of their games seem rushed. This is a different conversation, and Monkey Ball doesn't feel rushed at all. I'm just I mean, just Sega in general, because it's a Sega game, and I'm nev probably not going to review Sonic Forces or Team Sonic Racing, because I don't play Sonic games, but that's... No one really wanted or cared about that opinion. Whatever. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm vibing right now. I've played Animal Crossing when I woke up most days. It's been very fun and relaxing. Um, I'm probably going to stop playing the update in a few weeks. I, I can't see the game hooking me for years like um, New Leaf did or New Horizons did because of the pandemic, you know. It's a good update. Um, I'm sure pe retrospectively it will this it will v very much boost New Horizons' girth as a cool game. Yeah, I don't know. I want to keep talking because this video is a bit short and I haven't made a video in a while, but... I don't have much left to say unless unless you want to hear about Point Blank DS. Well, we'll get there someday.